morning, Jason. It's always good to see you. How's it going, Chris? Good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Leading a serving episode number nine. Nine in oh, 2022. Nine. Yeah. This is so good. So good. Glad to be here this morning. Yes. I am so excited about this new year and super excited about this podcast and yeah. this new year with it. So I know. I'm st- trying to look at uh, 2022 as the glass, glass is half full. Okay. You know, that... Um, you didn't drink it over New Year's? Another story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, just uh, 20, 21. Yes. You know, COVID. the glass is half full. Yes, and I'm I'm hoping to be pleasantly surprised by this year. Yes, um, I'm super excited. I'm gonna about do this my year. best to make sure. <laughs> yes, it goes as well as possible. So, learning tip for no, for the beginning of the year. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, you got? Do you have any um, anything big coming down the road for 22 that you're excited about? Um, you know, I'm just I'm excited that we're further out from 2020, and it's got to <laughs> be more normal. I'm hoping. Whatever. Whatever normal is, looks yeah. like. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and with the recent events, I'm hoping that, uh, yeah, I'm hoping everybody's doing well and looking forward to 2022 yeah. and moving forward. So. Hopefully it feels like a fresh start for everyone. Yes, exactly. Totally. So it's a, just opportunity to reflect and mm-hmm. move forward. So Yeah. Yeah. And now we're in January already. Like, That's right. It's crazy. Time flies. It does. So. It sure does. Well, um, I know you're a car guy. I totally am. <laughs> if, uh, if you're just listening to the audio, Chris is grinning ear to ear yes. um, with that question. So he didn't know I was going there. But um, being a car guy, I assume you know how to drive a stick, right? I totally do. Yeah. Preferred? Preferred. Yes. Yes. I do enjoy a good stick shift. Because you have more control, right? That's my contention That's uh, <laughs> to, to it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we want to. I want to talk today a little bit about... Um, Leadership in terms of a, a stick shift transmission, okay. uh, you know, a manual transmission. That um, there's a leadership tool called the Five Gears. Okay. That if you have a, a you know, a, a manual transmission, you have five gears plus reverse, mm-hmm. right? And each of those gears have a very specific role. Um, do you ever start off in fourth gear? Not unless you want to kill it. Right. 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 And, um, you know, when, when you're in fifth gear, does it hurt to go down to first or second gear? Usually. Yeah. Or even reverse, right? right. Reverse is even more painful, yeah. right? And so that's what we're going to be talking about today is that each of these five gears in reverse have a very specific role in our lives. Mm-hmm. And it's a specific space that we get into as leaders, as, um, you know, as part of our productivity or our relationship building. And um, so we want to just talk through those gears real quick and kind of give us a kind of a vocabulary and framework as we think about these things in our leadership, in our businesses, in our homes, and things like that. So right. um, the first four gears that we're going to talk about, we're actually going to start at the top with fifth gear. Um, that fifth gear through second gear is kind of this... Um, uh, I'm losing the word, but like a, a a pendulum swinging from relation mode, relationships to task mode. Okay. You know, and there's some personalities that are more prone to loving the task side of things. Mm-hmm. And on the opposite end of that spectrum um, is the relationally driven people, right? Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> we have all kinds of mix of personalities in the middle. But regardless of your personality, you have to, I mean, all four gears here from relationship to um, productivity to, to task, we have to exist in all four of these gears. Right. It's all. It's essential for our work, for our families, for everything that we do. Um, we have to exist in all these. And so we're going to start with fifth gear, which is kind of your focus mode. This is your ultimate task mode. You are fully centered. You are fully um, just invested in the moment. You're probably not multitasking mm-hmm. because this is your. Um, you're doing your deepest work. This is where in your deepest thought. This is the kind of thing where. Um, you sit down and you start doing whatever this might be, and you feel like thirty minutes has passed, mm-hmm. and you look up and it's been three hours. Yeah, you know when I when I was first learning to build websites, I was you know working out of a home office. We were doing some homeschooling with kids, so a lot of my work hours being a night owl, mm-hmm. I, everybody go to bed and I'd head downstairs to the basement. And um, I remember pulling away from a website one time that I was learning how to build, pulling away, going, "Man, I'm hungry." And I was like, why am I so hungry? Oh, it's 5 a.m. Oh, wow. I had worked pretty much the night through. Oh, my goodness. And the only thing that pulled me out of that focus mode was the fact that I was hungry again because it had been 
Yeah. Well, almost 12 hours, you know, 10 hours since dinner. <laughs> I oh was my ready. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our focus mode. That's fifth gear. That's when we're just cruising. We're on cruise control. We're, you know, we're just knocking it out. So if we downshift a little bit in fourth gear, that's kind of our task mode. That's where we're we're knocking things off the list. You know, we're checking the check boxes. We're getting things done. Maybe we're in the multitasking type mode, um, but we're just we're just getting things done. Mm-hmm. This isn't our deep work. This isn't the um, you know where we have blinders on type of moment. But it's where we're returning emails. We're mm-hmm. we're calling the bank for that. We're talking to this person. We're we're checking this. We're you know touching base with that employee. We're doing you know. This is the stuff that's got to get done. Yeah. Yeah. And so task mode can be very productive. And mm-hmm. um, that fourth gear, gear, you can get a whole lot done. Um, but shifting into that fifth gear, into that focus mode, takes a, a little bit of mindset shift. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where you, you shut some things down so you can truly focus. So fourth and fifth gears are our task side. Okay. Um, then when you drop down into third gear, that's kind of your social mode. That's the, um, it's the multitasking of relationships. To an extent, mm-hmm. where you're checking in, hey, how's the weather? How's you know, how's the kids? How you know, how was New Year's? You know, mm-hmm. you excited about 2022? That's third gear, where you're just checking in with people and you're really um, you're covering a lot of subjects, but maybe not going super deep. Um, but if you downshift a little bit further into second gear, that's where you're truly connecting with people, and you're finding out, you know, well, well, how are things really? Mm-hmm. And you're really getting down into that deeper, being truly present with friends and family. Um, and it's not about, um, you know, networking and, you know, making lots of connections. It's about really diving deep in one or two, three, you know, small number of connections. Um, and so fifth, fourth, third, and second gear, we kind of have this shifting from this ultimate task mode in fifth gear mm-hmm. down to second gear being just your your deep relational gear. Um, and like we said, there's there's some personalities that get into fourth and fifth gear from the moment they wake up. Mm. <laughs> That's where they live. Yeah. And they love it. And they're knocking stuff super productive. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, in second and third gears come a little bit harder mm-hmm. because it doesn't feel productive. Um, but then there's other personalities that have a really hard time getting stuff done when people are around. Right. <laughs> you know, I you know just want to connect. Do you? Well, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed that about you, Chris. <laughs> um, and so that is that is a very real part about, um, you know, if you are a people person and you just like being around people, which we're going to be interviewing a people person here in just a little while, yes. right? Um, that when you are around people, how do you get into that fourth and fifth gear? Mm-hmm. How do you make that shift? How do you transition from, you know, I'm really wanting to connect and find out, you know, how your family's doing, how you're doing, you know, mm-hmm. well, but I really got to get up into multitasking mode. I really got to, I really got to knock some stuff out today. So what are the things I have to put in my life to make that work? Yeah, this is a great, I love the fact that you're using a car on this because you have to be very intentional every time you shift a gear. Right. So it is definitely like you're saying like the fifth, through the second gear, like it's, they're, they're there and you have to, but you have to be very intentional about shifting them at different yeah. points. So. Yeah. That, that if you are totally in that fifth gear, that <clears throat> focus mode, and you are cranking out some of your best work of the week, and you know, this is probably the only time of the week you're going to be in fifth gear. Mm-hmm. And then your spouse or a good friend comes into the picture and they're really wanting to connect in second gear. Mm-hmm. That's a shift. Mm-hmm. That's hard. And it's right. really hard. Because your mind wants to keep staying where it was. Totally. And, um, Especially you know, with the productivity that comes right. with fifth gear. Or vice versa, mm-hmm. that you're really connecting with somebody in second gear, but that to-do list is still running in the back of one of your head. <laughs> oh, you know it. <laughs> Going, okay, let's let's move this along so I can you right. know, knock some things off the list. Um, so yeah, shifting through, I mean, you can grind gears. You can, like you said, you try and start off in fifth gear, you're going to kill it. You're, not, you're probably not going to get there. You got to work your way through... Uh, that process of getting there. So first gear is kind of the personal gear. Mm. This is your recharge mode. Your um, I'm slowing down. I'm not going to go too fast. I'm just going to slow down. I need to rest. I need to relax. I need to recharge. I need mm. to renew and kind of recreate myself. And, you know, and that looks very different for different personalities Yeah. that, um, you know, when you unplug and you are uh, trying to get into that renewal state, um, it looks very different for people. It, yes, that totally makes sense. You know, um, we we vacation with some friends on the beach, and um, you know, this other couple, um, th- our wives are very much just show us the sun and the beach, and no agenda. 
And my buddy in particular is like, well, but there's a reef over here we need to go explore. And then we could do this hike. And he's, he's, you know, he's more on a let's go, go, go. But yeah. that is super relaxing for him. Oh, nice. You know, and so it's uh, it's interesting to see this tension, to see that balance, um, you know, of what it takes to recharge and stuff like that. So what about reverse, though? Well, that's why I'm wearing, wearing two you... steps forward, one step back, yeah. right? <laughs> well, sometimes in these gears, we can run over relationships. Okay. We can run over people. We can run over tasks sometimes. Mm -hmm. And reverse is where we have to pull back. We have to respond to that moment, and we have to say the words, I'm sorry, or, mm -hmm. you know, I could have done better, or, you know, I just need to back up and make sure that relationships, that everything is, everything is where it needs to be before I start shifting back through the gears. Okay. Um, and so that re, you know, that responsive mode being in reverse is, is super important, especially with our, you know, when you're leading families, when you're leading, uh, your businesses that, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to learn here a little bit about relationships and being real and authentic with one another. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we can't find reverse mode, are people really going to trust us, mm. you know? And so just, just keeping the human side of it. Yeah. Yeah. Being honest, being, mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm. I'm not feeling it today. Yeah. You know, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> our viewer, our listeners don't know this yet, but um, a couple of weeks ago, we came in to, to record to a record. podcast. Yeah. And we both hit the room and went, yeah, not today. Not today. Not today. We and had to so, take a, a reverse mode that day. Yeah. We reversed out. And I went and spent some first gear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I was low on first gear. And so I had to, I had to shift into that for a while. And so that's awesome. So being real, being open, being honest with people. Um, so this can even give you a vocabulary, especially around the workplace or, you know, yeah. with your spouse or, you know, um, your friends of just saying, you know, Hey, I'm in fifth gear right now. You know, my door's closed. My headphones are on, <laughs> whatever it takes. Right. I'm in fifth gear. And, um, you know, and, but also if you're going on a work lunch right. to be intentional about, Hey, this is third gear and second gear. Mm -hmm. We are not going to, we're not going to let conversation conversation drift into fourth gear. We're not going to get little work things done while we're sitting here at lunch. This is truly about relationships and social and being mm. together. Um, so it's, it's neat to yeah, I love that. give some language around that little structure, yeah. how you think about your day, how you plan your time and, you know, structure your environments around that. Mm -hmm. That's so. a great conversation, even for in between spouses. Like I was, oh, my yeah. wife and I are similar to that, like trying mm -hmm. to struggle with uh, what she enjoys in downtime and for first gear for mm -hmm. her and f first gear for me, it looks a little different and it's okay. Right. You know, right. And just being able to recognize that difference and it's okay. Absolutely. So. Yeah. My wife tends to more the, a little bit more to the task side. I trend more to the person, people side. Yeah. Um, but when I'm in fourth gear, it's hard for me to, to let go of that. Cause I know fourth and fifth gears are harder to get to for me. Mm -hmm. And once I hit them, I don't want to come out very easy. Yes. I know that feeling too. <laughs> so, but well, hey, I am super excited about our interview today. I am too. I um, and not just because we're bringing another Jason on board, right? Well, and you know, I I'm super excited too because you know I I told Jason when I called him and said you know it's not just yes we are about entrepreneurs and stuff like that, but we're not everybody that we interview is not an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, they might be in some format have the skill set for it or have the leadership for it, but they might not still be. They might be in a great place inside their business, inside the business that they serve. Yeah. So Jason's not inside of a business unless you consider a school business, but I am super excited about him sharing his wealth of knowledge uh, because I do think he's a great leader. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And I am looking forward to having that conversation with him and seeing where how he's leading these younger kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, business leaders that are out there listening today don't don't tune out because, you know, oh, we got a teacher coming up. Right. Um, tune in because uh, Jason brings some, um, some great wisdom toward how we engage this younger generation, Gen yes. Z. Of, you know, these the are, next workforce. It's our next workforce. You mm -hmm. know, we've probably already got some Gen Z working for us. Yep. And so, you know, how do we, how do we, how do we work through this new generation that's been shaped deeply by COVID? Yes. Being in school and in college and things like that. And so, uh, so tune in. Hope you'll, hope you'll enjoy this interview with Jason yeah. Adler. Let's talk. Let's talk right. to him. Here we go. Well, welcome, Jason Adler. Yes, Jason. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Good yeah. to be here. Just want to warn you, Chris. You were. 
among two Jasons. I, uh, yes, and I you're am. in the middle. Jason right. sandwich. Yes. <laughs> yes. The force runs strong. For those of you who can't see our podcast, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just yeah. want to so, warn you. No, uh, we go way back with Jason. Yes. Years now. I mean, I've known you for probably going on nine years. I was here before you were. Yeah, you were? Yeah, I got here yeah. in 2011. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Was I here before you were? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You were on the council that uh, brought oh, everyone yes. in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we've had the opportunity to be in the trenches of leadership here at New Hope Church yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. It's been great. Good ride. So, but uh, yeah, Jason, um, why don't you start off? Tell us a little bit Give about some your background. story. and. Well, it was a cold day in November of uh, 1977 uh, at a hospital. No. Um, so I was born in uh, Northwest Indiana, so I'm not originally from around here. Uh, I guess you could say lower middle class, even though I really never knew we were poor uh, growing up. Uh, oldest of five kids. Uh, my dad got a job in the steel mill right outside, right out of, after high school and was there until he retired like three years ago. Uh, mm-hmm. My mom was a stay-at-home mom uh, until I was at least through high school. And uh, so, yeah, we had enough and uh, made do and always had family to play with and kids down the street to play with and uh, just kind of, you know, didn't realize that we were on food stamps at some point in the mid-'80s. Uh, found out <laughs> later. I knew my dad was laid off for a little while, but uh, we never went hungry, never had any issues. So mm-hmm. I was the first member of my family, my generation, or even my parents, to go to college. Uh, went to college in uh, Valparaiso University up in that same area and got a job teaching high school math uh, right outside of Valpo. So wow. uh, I was there for until 2011 when we came down here. But uh, 2005, I met my wife uh, online, uh, eHarmony. Uh, so before that became the thing to do, we were kind of the pioneers of that kind of stuff. Blazing so, a trail, Yeah, right? exactly. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, had a couple kids, and uh, she's a teacher too, but she stayed home for one semester with the first one, and then f- for a year with the second one, and she's like, I don't really want to go back. I- I'd like <laughs> to be able to stay home with the kids full time. And I said, I'm kind of a teacher, so that's going to be a really tight budget right there. Yeah. But uh, uh, we decided to make it work and, you know, let you know, we'll figure things out as we go. So she put in mm-hmm. resignation, and her sister lives down here, a uh, pediatrician, and said, "Hey, we just had a kid. If you want to move down here, you know, we'll, you know, pay you a little bit to watch our kid, and you know, make a little extra money that way." So all that we had to do was uh, sell our house and me get a job, and all this in 2011, like two years after the the big crash. So right. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong with that? Right. But no uh, uh, interviewed twice, and the second time. Uh, had a job offer down here and put our house on the market and got a lot more than some of the realtors were expecting us to get and found a house down here. You just see God's hand at every step of the way. And That's so cool. summer 2011 down here and uh, been here since then teaching uh, high school math still. Very cool. Wow. So That's how many cool. years in uh, teaching now? So this is finishing year 22, 11 down there and ele- or 11 up there and 11 wow. here. So. Wow. And math what? the whole time? Love math it. the whole time. Yep. What, what spawned the whole teacher idea? Like is there... S- yeah, so I've always been a nerd. Uh, I was, you know, uh, yeah. I owned up to it in, in school. Uh, didn't really have a choice. Realized, yeah, I'm not cool. I'm never going to be cool. So might as well just uh, lean into it. So, uh, so I really enjoyed math. I actually enjoyed German too. I thought about being a German teacher, but uh, my German teacher was always more cooler than I could ever be. Like he was actually like fun and interesting, and exciting. My math teachers were a little more straightforward and. I could do that a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> didn't realize you could consider being a teacher at first. Uh, I wanted to be like an engineer or like, you know, even librarian or something. And my mom, you know, I was younger. She said, you know, you've got too much personality. You're too social to just be like sitting behind a desk. And I'm like, yeah, you don't see me at school. Like, I don't, I, people don't talk to me. I, you know, she was right. Like, you know, you know moms know. But, uh, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I, junior, senior high school, you know, I, I – I wasn't the smartest kid in the math class, but I knew things pretty well. But the kids, would, friends would turn to me for help because I could explain things better to them than others. And nice. some of them would say, you know, you should be a teacher. You, you could explain this really well. Yeah, maybe. Well, I <laughs> went to college. I'm like, all right, I'll give this thing a try. And I mean, it's funny, another kind of God thing. Like, you know, in fifth grade, uh, new to a, a school, and I had to explain a problem, that I, a math problem I'd done on the board, and I must have stuttered or shaked or something like that. And the teacher made a joke that I could be like Elmer Fudd uh, from the Looney Tunes. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that sticks with a kid, you know. I, yeah. I definitely yeah. don't remember that, you know, 30 years later. Right. Uh, and, <laughs> Thanks, teacher. And then high school, my worst 
uh, class was speech. <clears throat> like, you know, I would shake, like my hands would literally shake while I would mm-hmm. talk in front of a group. So obviously the job I'm going to end up with is one where I'm te- talking in front of people for the rest of my life. Right. So, Why not? So somehow it all worked out and, you know, I stood in front of the classroom. I looked the same age as the kids when I started teaching and mm-hmm. uh, had to wear a tie to separate myself from them. But uh, <laughs> I... I love it. Uh, I kept doing it and enjoyed doing it. My mm-hmm. first teaching job, I was in a small school in a cornfield. Uh, so I was one of two math teachers in the entire school. And after one year, the other guy retired. So I was the department chair in a department of two. So okay. right. know, that's, <laughs> you get your feet in the fire. You learn, learn the job <laughs> right, right away. Right. So, that's right. So I've, you know, taught everything now and, uh, you know, love it every, every day. That's awesome. Loved even the COVID years. Yeah, um, let's fast forward. The worst part about the COVID years was when we were at home and trying to teach kids online. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of talk about it at school, like any thought that people had five years ago that like online learning was a wave of the future and like schools were going to be unnecessary, that's gone. Like there's no <laughs> way that is ever going to be an argument anytime <clears throat> soon. Like. And I said from the beginning, there's going to be, it's going to separate kids. There's going to be kids who adapt and Uh Mm -hmm. figure things out and have good support at home and they're going to roll with the punches and they're going to be fine. Yep. And there's going to be kids who just, I don't know, they they internalize the the fear and the victimhood and they Uh use this as an excuse to not do anything and they lose a year of school or now a year and a half or going on two years. And and it, it came true. Like, and it had wasn't necessarily, you know, intelligence-based. Like, there were some really, really bright kids who basically had been gone for two years. Yeah. Wow. And some really, really low kids who were like, you know what? I need to be in school because this whole <laughs> work and learning from home thing ain't working for me. Right, And right. so it was really interesting to see kind of those two groups spread out like that. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Well, outside of math and teaching, mm-hmm. uh, you mentioned you've been married since 05 or something like that, Yep, right? got married in 06, yeah. 06. And uh, you got two great kids. Uh, love your family, and uh, but what uh, what makes Jason tick outside of the classroom and math? What? Oh, let's see. I spend most of my uh, well, I, I really try to get myself off of screens as much as possible. Like you know, I'm I love video games, but I never got good at them. I, you know, I'm always like one generation console behind. But you know, I'll <laughs> play a sports game, you know, just to have something to do. And mm-hmm. you know, I love sports, and you know. Growing up in Northwest Indiana, you know, we joke, or I joke that that's the part of Indiana that doesn't know the rest of Indiana exists. Like, we're based <laughs> in Chicago suburbs, so I cheer for all the Chicago teams. And only only Indiana teams I cheer for are the colleges, like IU and Purdue. Mm-hmm. Not really Purdue, I, IU and Notre Dame. But uh, so I'll follow, you know, sports, you know, play sports video games, but to try to keep from staring at screens so much, especially with kids growing up and seeing how much they're addicted to their screens, I want to lead by example and show that you can – survive a day without, you know, with occasionally looking up from your screen and, like, doing something else. So I've been doing puzzles kind of since COVID started. I used to do them a little, little, you know, semi-regularly, but now I've got always got a a puzzle on a table so I can sit Mm -hmm. and work on a puzzle. You know, I like, you know, TV shows, sit back and relax, you know, things to watch with the kids, watch with the family, Mm -hmm. you know. So we got more than enough pets in the house, take the dog for a walk every once in a while. (laughs) uh, Nice. There you go. And people, you know, I, you know, mm-hmm. I, my wife, my mom was right. I'm, I'm you know, a social person. I want to be around people. So, mm-hmm. you know, get together with folks, you know, get to get some guys together on a Thursday and hang out at a, you know, local restaurant and just chat or, yeah. you know, text some friends or family and like, hey, you know, how's things going? So, yeah, that was the hard, hardest part of COVID is not being around people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. Well, as we, um, <clears throat> On the podcast, we were talking about leading is serving. Yeah. And as we think about leadership, whether uh, it's in the family, whether it's in, uh, in the schools, the classroom, you know, among other faculty and staff, mm-hmm. um, what are some things that you think through in terms of principles or values that you try and live by um, as you lead others? So we have a whole rubric that we're, we're judged by, and, it's, you know, how well do you teach, you know, thinking and problem solving, and what's, the, you know, you know are, is your pacing right, and, you know, do you mm-hmm. have the right activities and materials, but there's a portion of the rubric that's based on just like the atmosphere, the, the classroom, like the culture. And it gets weighted the least as far as the, the, the system goes, but to me it's the most important. Like mm-hmm. you know, one of the, the quotes that I heard early, early on that I've uh, lived by was, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And Absolutely. so, you know, mm-hmm. I from day one, I, I set an atmosphere in my class that 
you know, I'm here for you. I, I told my class this year, I said, I am the most patient person you're ever going to meet. If you ask a question and I don't answer it well, ask again. And if you still don't understand, ask again. And I'm going to keep trying to find a new way to answer the question until we, until I see the light bulb go on above your head. Mm-hmm. And so just making it a safe place for them to ask questions and take risks and be wrong. I, I teach mostly honors kids, and I know as being an honors kid in school, like they're the ones that least want to be wrong. Like you can't, right. like <laughs> you don't want to be the dumb kid in a room full of smart kids. Right. right. So if you're the one raising your hand, you're going to assume everyone else around you already understands mm-hmm. when really 45% of them, you know, don't. 85% of them are waiting for someone to ask that question because they didn't get it either. Right, right. And so so I've really, you know, from the beginning, really pushed making a, a, a safe place for them to screw up, for them to make mistakes, for them to actually be challenged to the point where they don't, don't get it right away. Like some of them coasting through until they get to my class. I don't want them to coast anymore. Mm. But also balancing out, I also don't know how important grades are. So I try to find mm-hmm. ways to... I'm going to challenge you, but I'm not going to kill your GPA. And nice. so that's just kind of the balance I try to strike in there. And not intentionally, but I model it by screwing up a lot of times in front of them. In front of them. Like, hey, you know, two times three equals five. Mr. Allard, you mean to do that? Yes, yes, I did. I was just seeing if you guys were paying attention. And we're all just erased. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't make any mistakes. <laughs> right. so, so just, you know, I try to make it a, a, a relaxed atmosphere. You know, I try to have fun with them, try to joke around with them, you know, care about them as people. And hopefully they buy in enough. They're like, okay, this is someone I want to go to, go to fight for, go to go to bat for. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I want to learn from this guy. Yeah, so, I yeah. love that. Yeah, it sounds like you strike a really good balance of of appropriate challenge mm-hmm. of pushing them, you know, pushing the envelope of right. you know of that, um, but also bringing as much support as possible to you know to their role as a learner as right. a student. Um, and I I think. I think you might be one of the favorite social media accounts, even though you're limiting screen time. <laughs> right. Um, at least in our circles, it seems like everybody loves hearing stories about how you how you handle that atmosphere in the classroom. Right. Right. And that there's really a neat balance of that support and challenge, mm-hmm. a neat balance True. of of kind of like truth and grace, like we've been talking about, you know, here at the mm-hmm. church, even of, um, you know. Here's where it's wrong. Right. Here's where you need to improve. Right. But there's a huge amount of grace mm-hmm. in that, mm-hmm. and um, and I love that. So any any uh, fun stories? So this all started <laughs> actually back in my old school. Uh, the first one I remember, I had a girl come out to me, Mister Allen, Mister Allen, my, my calculator is broken. I'm like, oh, what do you mean? Well, it's broken. Look, see see this. When I type in thirty six divided by six and hit the equal sign, see nothing's changing. I just look at her, and she's like, see, what's wrong? I just keep looking at her. She said, wait, is 36 divided by 6, 6? I just kind of <laughs> nod. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And she goes and sits back at her desk. And so I had a friend who's a uh, middle school math teacher over at another corporation. And I don't know if I emailed him or just talked to him at church the next Sunday. I'm like, you're not going to believe this. And, and we just had a good laugh about it. And it became kind of a contest. Like, you know, we wanted to see, mm-hmm. you know, the winner that year of who had the most ridiculous thing the kids said or, you know, right. the craziest student moment. And so we emailed back and forth and, oh, I got the winner this year. You're, you're not going to beat this one. And so this was probably 2000, 2006, six, seven, something like that. Mm-hmm. So pre social media, pre Facebook. So then, you know, I got on Facebook and I'm like, yeah, there might be other people who want to hear these kind of stories. So yeah. I just started sharing, you know, random things kids said or, you know, you know, I gave a multiple choice test, you know, I think it was back in my last school, and the choices were A, B, C, and D, but every one of them said F of X equals, F of X equals. So the kid wrote down F for the choice because the choice had F as the first, like, F of X equals. F wasn't even an option. And, you know, <laughs> I know what you meant, but you got to pay attention. To, and so, you know, and, you know, it's never in a, in a mean-spirited way. It's never, a, yeah. oh, these kids are idiots. I can't believe, you know, our, our future is screwed. I might say that jokingly, but, you know, right. you know, you know right. I, I've given, you know, I, I've just that feedback people give on Facebook. I've, I've get, got the right balance of, you know, I'm just having fun. You got to laugh. Otherwise, you're going to cry sometimes, right. you know. But, you know, also, if I can laugh with these kids, then they can laugh at themselves when they say silly things or, you know, screw something up. So. And it's okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the sun's still going to rise tomorrow. You're going to come yeah. back and, you know, say something really, really intelligent tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> or it becomes a story, you know, five years later when the kids graduate. I'm like, oh, I remember three years ago you made fun of me because I couldn't figure out what fraction was between, you know, three, thir- three halves and five halves. <laughs> yep, yep. I remember that one. That was on Facebook. You just don't know it yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. there's a, 
I mean, I think there's <clears throat> teachers that react by calling students out. Right. And they kind of harp on that negative aspect. Um, but you you figure out a way to call students up into, you know, kind of elevating their their ability above their failure. Mm-hmm. Well, they recognize that. Like my first year teaching, I had the worst class. Like there was, you know, I would pray before the class started, like, Lord, give me the patience to get through this next 90 minutes and not say anything that's going to get me fired. And, you know, <laughs> they're just, they're, they're a bunch of Algebra 1 kids or maybe even pre-Algebra kids. They're all freshmen. You know, the job that I got hired for, the previous teacher was on maternity leave, but they basically said she wasn't coming back. Like, and it was because this class had basically, like, convinced her never to come back. And so oh, wow. there was one day they were just being themselves, and I had said something in a more mean-spirited way, like just, you know, I basically insulted them to their faces. And one of the teachers said, oh, that's the same way the teacher last year would talk to us. And that just struck me. Like, you know, oh, wow. they, mm-hmm. they knew. They, they could tell that tone. They could tell when right. a teacher is done with them and doesn't think highly of them. Mm. And so that's kind of a little wake-up call. Like, okay, I got to make sure that these kids know that they may be getting under my skin, but I'm still on their side. I'm still fighting for them, mm-hmm. and I haven't given up on them. How did the rest of that year turn out? I'm just curious. Um, they all made it through my class. Some of yeah. them made it again the next year through my class. But, uh, uh, you know, I I had kids, you know, one kid found me on Facebook, you know, I think like five years ago. Yeah. And said, you know, he actually like, you know, sent me a message like, I just want to say thank you. Like, you know, you didn't give up on me, you know. I'm an artist now, and I, I create oh, wow. all these different things, and I teach other people different things, you know, you know, about the craft. And whenever you know, I see some kid getting frustrated or some being frustrated, I think how you treated me when I was frustrated, and I, I try to have more grace with them, more patience with oh, them, wow. and, and believe in them when they don't believe in themselves. I'm like, dude, I remember you, you were just a jerk in my class. I don't remember <laughs> any of the the good things you're saying right now, but I'm glad I said the things that I said instead of what I was yeah. thinking. Right. At that right. Time, so. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, that's crazy. That's awesome. That is great leadership, I got to tell you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like, that is like 101. Did we stop? Even, We're done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, even when you're being a jerk. Yes. Um, that uh, patience, grace, and um, I, fighting for their highest good. I mean, that's yeah. that's what this is about. So All the more reason why you should be here, Jason, because you need to teach us some of this patience <laughs> and some right. of these things, right? That's right. Well, it's a lot easier in the classroom when those kids go home at the end of the day. Yeah. Know, that's my two kids at home, how much grace I have with them and you might get a different story sometimes. Yeah. Oh, we'll have them on next week. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, <sounds> good. <laughs> They've ratted me off for other things before. You know? That's right. <laughs> so one of the reasons, I mean, if, you know, if you're listening to the podcast today and wondering, okay, we got a school teacher on a, you know, business leadership, you know, entrepreneurship kind of idea. We're up, one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you today, Jason, is about this upcoming generation that Gen Z um, is what currently, I think, 13 to 25 years old. And so you're teaching right in the middle of that generation right mm-hmm. now. Um, and I think, you know, COVID has certainly um, left an, in, an indelible imprint on that generation, mm-hmm. uh, especially yes. like you were saying, two years of schooling and, you know, just what a um, what an adaptable generation. I mean, I, would our would Gen X, would we have made it through? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know? That, yeah. I mean, we didn't have internet either. Back right, then. yeah. Without right. technology, it would have been a tough couple of years. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So... <clears throat> what are you um, what are you seeing in this upcoming generation as far as um, some of the differences? You know, we've you know Gen X is kind of your um, what your forties and early fifties. Mm-hmm. Uh, millennials are twenty five to forty ish. You know, and then we've got the Gen Z coming up, and they're starting to hit our workforce. And mm-hmm. so you know, a lot of our young hires in our businesses are going to be Gen Z, mm-hmm. right? Who've come through Mr. Adler's class. And, and there's a lot of shifts from the way the 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 a lot of the talking heads are talking about a lot of the shifts that are coming with this right. this generation. Yeah. So what are you what are some of the differences you're seeing in this generation as far as how they are approaching life or challenges or you know things like that? What are what do you see in uh, I got to start negative and hopefully we're going to go to a positive, but I mean, you know, the general mindset from 20 years ago to now is, you know, the, the work ethic just hasn't been the same. You know, you give homework and you're lucky if kids will do it outside of school. You know, obviously the devices are a distraction, you know, mm-hmm. kids, you know, and adults just can't look up from their phones or their screens right. long enough to, to see what's going on. Uh, I think there's a, and it happens in my own house, there's a 
misconception that these kids can multitask better than anyone else. Like, I can have my earbuds in and be playing a game on my phone and totally know what you're talking about up there. I know all the math you're talking about, Mr. Adler. You may hear the words come out of my mouth, but you don't have a clue what's actually right. going on. And uh-huh. so, uh, so there's definitely issues there. You know, for years I've called them the microwave generation. Like, you know, if it's not done in a minute or less, then it's not worth doing and it's not worth learning. So the need for immediate gratification, immediate feedback, immediate results is uh, is definitely an issue. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's the, the glass half empty side of it. Mm. Um, glass half full, in a way, it's not really them themselves, but this is probably the first generation that's coming through without being generally raised in the church. And so just as far mm. as faith-based things, you know, I think they can be more open to to faith things and to to you know new ideas and, and new experiences in that area because they they're not immunized against it. Like you know, a lot of kids mm-hmm. that grow up in the church, they get just enough Jesus to you know they graduate high school and go off, and that's it. They don't need it anymore. And mm-hmm. So so I think these kids are more open to things, and they definitely need or are open to to let's say it differently. They, they recognize when you're genuine. They they recognize, you mm-hmm. know, when you're being real. Like, you know, I try to put a lot more things that are very real world in math, but you get into some concepts of algebra too, and, you know, there's no immediate, you know, you don't need to simplify rational exponents in, you know, in the grocery store. And I told them that. I said, folks, you know, I wish I could tell you that you're going to be able to use this next week or anything like that, but it's not true. And so the reason you need this is because some of you may be in pre-calculus, some of you may be somewhere, you know, down the line, be in another math class, or you may never use it again after this week or after your SATs, in, you know, mm-hmm. in a month. But I think they 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 can spot fake and genuine, and they are looking for genuine, and if you uh-huh. can be genuine and real with them and just lay it out there and say, okay, you know, this may not be the answer you want, but this is what I see and this is wh- why we're doing this, <sighs> they may not like it and they, they may check out, but I think they're, they're at least more, more willing to put up with you for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so as we think about that in terms of, <clears throat> you know, our businesses or even, um, I mean, they're checking us, us out, yeah, whether right. it's a business, a church, um, you know, a social group, anything, mm-hmm. they're checking us, us out to check that genuineness mm-hmm. before they ever sign on. And so they're, you know, they're interviewing us as yeah. much as we're interviewing them. Absolutely. Right. And, um, you know, and as we, you know, think about capturing this generation, mm-hmm. um you know, some of that glass is half empty <laughs> yeah. type stuff, you know, of that immediate gratification that, you know, that we're that we're walking with them those first couple of weeks or, you know, along that early part of the journey. Right. You know, just helping them desire and want more to to learn more of the mm-hmm. complexity. Um, and um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think... Uh, you, go ahead, if you... No, uh, I mean, I think that's... It's, it's interesting, like... Uh, Whatever generation that's out there, right? Mm-hmm. We've all struggled with the whole genuine thing. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, like, I can just completely see where this younger generation it totally makes sense now that you said that. Like, they're looking for the genuineness because mm-hmm. who's not? Like, and there's so many um, people out there who are not. And so for you to be real in your leadership and to be like, hey, you might not even use this next week. You might need to right. use this in the PSATs, mm-hmm. which is just a great. But you got to know it for now. Mm-hmm. So you might as well learn it, work through it, and just be real with it. That's a great yeah. – I do appreciate that. Yeah, this is – you know, Millennial and Gen Z are, what, the most advertised generations ever. Really? Uh, they, they've been advertised to, sorry. They've been advertised <laughs> to, and, and they can spot the fakes a mile away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. They, you know, when you think about social media influencers, they know what's real, they know what's fake. Right. You know, even though, like you said, we're – we're stuck to it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> We're addicted to those screens. Right. You know, and stuff. Well, and they're the ones that got the most coming at them, right? From a digital perspective. Oh, they're, because they're. Whether mm-hmm. they have the ability now or not, they, they're the ones that need the ability to discern real from fake and truth from, from fiction. Because, yeah, they're getting bombarded with YouTubers information overload. And everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's from every all, perspective. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's yes. no longer the simple ads on TV in between, com- in between shows. Right. Like it's all over the place. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're being asked to pick sides early in the ever. Like I, you know, I'm not getting too political, but I have no idea who my parents ever voted for for the first, you know, 30 years of my life. Right. Where these kids, they're being, you know, told black and white. You know, 
this side's good, this side's bad, or, you know, you know, whether it be things involving, you know, uh, you know, gender identity type stuff or, you know, and, you know, economics even just a little bit so that like they're whatever they're hearing, you know, they're told you either believe this or, or you're wrong. And so oh, wow. it's, it's really, you know, one thing that I try to push with them is just being able to recognize that anyone you disagree with doesn't mean they're, that they're, uh, bad, that they have evil intentions. Oh, like, yeah. you know, you can, disagree with someone. You. you can disagree with someone and they actually want what's best. And right. I try that with my own kids, but I try as much as I can. I mean, I teach high school math. We don't really get too much into, you know, social issues and real world issues, but, you know, just trying not to see us versus them as, you know, every single aspect of your life. Like, right. you know, life's become a team sport where everything is, you're either cheering for our team or you're cheering for their team. And, you know, I'm trying to break that habit one person at a time but nice. it's, it's definitely a, a mindset that's it's in it's in the adults right it's, it's very filtered down to the kids and, and very much now <laughs> you know, i apologize to our kids sometimes in school i'm like you know the adults you see on social media stuff we're setting a terrible example for you so you guys got to be able to break that because mm -hmm. you know right now we can't survive with another generation that just goes at each other's throats like this like we got to be able to listen and you know give some of the benefit of the doubt and you know see another side of the story Right, And I think that's where I see a light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. with this generation is that mm -hmm. they value the authenticity, they value the genuine, the real. And, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 the falsehood of, of these, you know, extremes, whether it's political or social or any of those things, um, I think and I hope and I pray they're going to begin seeing through that in ways that mm -hmm. our, you know, our generations have not. Right. Um, and they're going to fight for what's real. And, you know, I think the, the battle against screens, the battle against, um, you know, social media perceptions, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I, I think that's huge. Uh, I was mm -hmm. listening to a, a podcast with uh, Tristan Harris that did the um, uh, Social Dilemma Oh yeah, uh, documentary on Netflix. Netflix yeah. You know, talking about that, and um, he was talking about the social pressures that, you know, if, if one kid in a in a classroom got off of social and said, "I'm I'm done with that," mm -hmm. the social pressure of not being in the know is yeah. huge. Then, yeah, yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm sure you see that play out in the classroom. I mean, even you know, my own kids, like you know, my son goes and spends the night at a friend's house, and he's like. Well, I went to bed early because everyone else was on their screens, you know, after 10 o'clock, and I didn't have my phone with me, so, you know, I just, you know, went to sleep. Like, even at a get-together, the kids, you know, are all mm. doing their own separate thing after a certain time. No, no one's, like, interacting with each other anymore, and right. so he's, oh, he's the outcast because he doesn't have a phone to stare at for the next hour or two before bed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's definitely the, the haves and the have-nots, you know, if you don't have your phone with you and you're not, you know, checking the latest whatever, you're, mm -hmm. you're the outcast. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so moving forward, how um, you know when we talk about bringing support and challenge mm -hmm. to this generation, um, like you do in the classroom, what are what are some things that we need to to challenge our young people with, um, and how can we bring them support in some of these glass half glass glass half empty? I can't even say it. <laughs> um, you know, some of those types of things, or you know, when we're thinking social media and screens, how are how are ways that we can challenge? Because uh, we've we've had that theme come up a couple times in interviews about being present with people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. listening and things like that. So right. how, you know, for those of us who may not interact with high schoolers on right. a five days a week basis, <laughs> how, um, you know, what are what are some ways that we can engage them to bring that support and challenge to them? I think it kind of, kind of goes back to that quote again about uh, people not caring how much you know until they know how much you care. Like, you know, if if it just comes from like you know. Uh, a leader just saying, hey, all of you, if, or even, you know, the principal just saying, hey, kids, you know, quit vaping in the bathroom and quit destroying things because that TikTok told you to do it, you <laughs> mm -hmm. know, right. the kids just laugh that off, like, you know, but if it comes from someone that they actually, like, think values them and, like, has a relationship with them and, and cares about them, you know, it may not cure them 100%, but it's got a lot better chance of them sinking in. So I think they're they're looking for that relationship. They're looking for someone who actually, like, mm -hmm from the older generation or from the parents or adult age who cares about them and actually wants the best from them. You know, I've got a coworker right across the hall. You know, she's basically become the uh, the, the school mom for a couple of kids who've mm -hmm. got terrible home lives. And 
And so these kids, you know, they, they do stupid stuff and they know they do stupid stuff, but, you know, they come to her and like, yeah, I screwed up again. And she's like, well, did your mom take away your phone? No, give me your phone. And so for the rest of the school day, you know, hmm. the kid's phone's in her classroom because, and the girl did it. She's like, yeah, my school mom took away my phone. So, I mean, <laughs> oh, you know, wow. if you if you take that relationship, you can really push boundaries and, mm-hmm. and you know, basically become you know, a parent to these kids. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think, you know, if you come up with an authority, like top down thing, the kids, you know, like dictatorship stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just not going to fly. I mean, you know, most of you try that in your own home. Like, you know, if mm-hmm. I tell my kids, don't do that because I said so, or, you know, I'm taking this phone away because I said so, right. you know, it's going to get, you might have the phone, but you're not going to have any change in behavior. Right. But if, right. you, if you come alongside and say, all right, talk to me, why, why'd you do that? Yeah. And mm-hmm. just, have, and then, you know, steer the conversation to, you know, the, you know, was that really the best choice or, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you know, can I talk to you about this? And mm-hmm. so I, I think if you, if, if they really think you're listening to them and, and want to hear from them, they're more willing to listen to you. And, mm-hmm. and you know, so. And if we're modeling the behavior too. Yes, right. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if I tell them, yeah, you shouldn't be on screens and I, and I go downstairs and I'm playing on a you know, video game for the next three hours <laughs> right. and they come downstairs like, you told us uh, no more screens. Yeah, that works for you. It doesn't work for me. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? I can't do that anymore. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. This podcast has ruined me. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Well, we um, we really appreciate you, Jason. Yes, for thank you. All that you're doing for our next generation, mm-hmm. uh, first off, and uh, leading your family and your kids, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, yeah, just uh, and, the words of wisdom of right. of caring. Um, that's, and thanks for being so genuine with these kids that aren't even yours. That you know, it's that's a, in my opinion, it's a whole nother level. Like you can choose to. It's like you said. You can do as I say, or you can do as I do. And mm-hmm. it's just a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more work to do as I do. Right. I mean, I, I, yeah. we know it. Like, I don't, I know both of you guys know it. It's, it is, it takes a lot more work to keep mm-hmm. showing kids what mm-hmm. to do right. versus telling what well, kids Well, like to what do. you said a minute ago, the, um, the, the top down authority. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're just dictating, that's easy. Right. Anybody can lay down a law. But to truly influence someone's life requires relationship and intentionality. And what was that quote you just said that, that you keep bringing? Back people up? don't care what people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Thanks yeah. for hanging out with us and sharing some of your wisdom with us. And uh, Jason, you have a lot of wisdom, and I, I do appreciate you. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, thanks for inviting well, me. Sure in. Right. This is fun. That's yeah. right. Hope. Um, 2022 is an amazing spring semester for you. Yes. That uh, we get past all this COVID stuff. Yes, and, yes, right. and classrooms get to a new normal. But let's go back to the old normal. I don't need the new normal anymore. Yeah, that's, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, thanks, Jason. Thanks. Sure. Thanks. Right. We'll be back in just a moment. Jason, I got to tell you, I... You know, it just goes to show that it doesn't matter what part of life, you're, whether you're a business owner or an employee, or there's just a lot of great leaders that are in our community already. And I'm so glad that we take the time to um, spend time with them to learn more from them because I got something out of today already. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm just, Jason was just, I'm super excited about the way he is teaching our young students yeah. that are coming up in this world. And the proof of leadership, I mean, you could have a company with 20 employees, 20-something 20 right. employees, right? right? And they're all paid to be influenced by you. Right. Um, those kids aren't. No. And he and <laughs> What he's a hard f- audience. Right. <laughs> and he's killing it. Yeah, and it's know? so effective. I mean, to have yeah. people... And I mean, one of the things that he talked about was talking about how somebody sought him out afterwards after they had been mm-hmm. through and thanked him. You know, that is a true testament to Absolutely. his leadership. Yeah. I got a, I'm super impressed with that. Super impressed with how he's leading his students and talking with them. Yeah, I think there's a sense of respect around him as a teacher in his classroom and mm-hmm. and how he how he leads in that environment that that um, is is contagious. Through other through other circles, and so yeah. glad we could have him on today. 
Yeah. So, yeah. So we got to work on our patience, right? <laughs> uh, no, that's <laughs> yeah. a. I'm glad this is the beginning of 2022 because yeah, maybe I need to put that on my list. Apparently, didn't right. show up earlier when I was thinking about stuff last November. Right. Because if but, you, you know, the old, uh, the old cliche or whatever, if you pray for patience, then, then God's just going to give you the opportunity to practice it. To right. Practice, right. <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But what a challenge as well to. For us to truly be real and genuine with one mm-hmm. another, that um, we've, as a culture, we've we've gotten off base on that. We've right. we've put up facades. We've put up here's what I want to look like in public, or mm-hmm. you know here's here's my business face and my home face, and right. you know is is Chris the same in all of those environments? Right? Is work yeah. Chris the same as home Chris? I, I, I struggle with it. I'm being it honest is. with you. It's not easy to stay the same person twenty four seven. Yeah. Um, just because of different influences. Well, um, and you just get different things that pop up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like just staying true to myself, I think is is another yeah. great thing for 2022. And you try and bring your best, particularly at work, because that's right. where you spend most of your day, at least Monday through Friday or Saturday right. or whatnot. But, um, you know, you get home just drained and exhausted mm-hmm. and tired and mm-hmm. you still have to be present. You still have right. to bring your best in every environment. That's And you have to, tough. you know, we're just touching on the thing there at the end, you know, talking about how, you know, leading with what you're doing and not just what's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. It was genuine. Yeah. I appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know about you, Chris, but I certainly echo um, Jason's concerns around technology, screens, yes. social media, you know, not, I mean, yes, with our kids. Yep. I mean, the, the influences that those things have in our kids' lives is amazingly, potentially negative right. in many ways, but yet in our own lives. You know, you go to a family gathering and, and generations older than us are <laughs> glued to their screens or, right. you know, it's it's really just amazingly pervasive and we don't, we don't see it. Right. We don't notice it. So, so. some big challenges for us coming out of a uh, high school math teacher today, right? Right. Man. <laughs> and it wasn't math. I, that I have to admit, I was so happy about. Yeah. Because he didn't bring any, you know, <laughs> he didn't bring theorems any calculations for me to solve today. You? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I would be one of those kids in his class struggling to yes. make sense of it all. He and gets so, super smart but, with that math stuff. But, well, hey, thanks for listening today. And be sure you like, subscribe, um, comment on the podcast, share this um, with your friends yeah. on social media. On social Use media. that screen you're looking at. <laughs> <Right>. and share <laughs> it, please. <laughs> thanks. Um, but welcome to 2022 and may your year be amazing. Yes. Welcome yeah. to 2022. Yeah. Serve others well this year and uh, fight for their highest good. And I think that will make the year completely different than the previous. Yes. So, good stuff. Thanks, Jason. Good seeing you today, Chris. All right.